Good morning and welcome to our celebration of the Holy Mass, especially today as we celebrate the feast of Saint Mark. And we ask for his prayers, for his intercession and his presence today to accompany us in our prayer. And our opening hymn for today's Mass will be City of God. Away from your slumber someone to devour. 
resist him, steadfast in faith, knowing that your brothers and sisters throughout the world undergo the same sufferings. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory through Christ Jesus, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you after you have suffered a little. To him be dominion forever. Amen. I write you this briefly to Silvanus, whom I consider a faithful brother, exhorting you, testifying that this is the true grace of God. Remain firm in it. The Chosen One at Babylon's sends you greeting as thus Mark, my son. Greet one another with a loving kiss. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, My kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The heavens proclaim your wonders, O Lord, and your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can rank with the Lord? who is like the Lord among the sons of God. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Blessed the people who know the joyful shout, in this light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day, and through your justice they are exalted. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Before Jesus ascended into heaven, he promised many things to his apostles, among them the ability to cast out demons. 
And of course, we profess our faith every Sunday and when we proclaim the creed, where we say we believe in heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible. And yet many times we doubt or we forget that there is a spiritual battle going on in the invisible world. In our first reading, St. Peter put it much more succinctly. He said, our opponent is the devil. And then went on to say that the devil goes prowling about like a roaring lion. Now those images almost contradict each other, prowling and roaring, because a lion does usually one or the other, but not both at the same time. Prowling in a sneakiness where, we're, where we many times feel that we're tempted, that we're coaxed into doing um, evil, to be pulling away from God. But usually when someone is prowling, it is quiet with stealth. And yet St. Peter also reminds us that it's very much a roaring lion, where as a lion will use roaring to intimidate, many times the forces of evil are around us, surrounding us, intimidating us to do the right thing. But Peter did not just stop there. Peter reminded us that we're called to place our hope in God, that it is God who ultimately is in charge if we make the choice to follow. Now many times when we find ourselves being tempted, when we find ourselves being attacked by evil, it is so easy for us to almost feel sorry for ourselves. Why is this happening to me? And we, we sit here and we reflect on that. And that's what St. Peter said, that this is not unique to any one of us, but it happens equally to all. At this time where we have the coronavirus, our lives are disrupted. And then this is where we're really called are we going to cast our cares, keep our focus on the Lord? Or are we going to give in to the roaring of the lion around us? Yes, many of us have been affected, not just because we're staying at home, but maybe we have been furloughed, lost our jobs. Maybe we are sick. We know people who are sick. Maybe we've even known someone who has died. But yet we have to recognize that despite that, it is the Lord who is with us always. Bishop Dan asked us at the end of each Mass, which is why we, to pray to, and that is why we pray to, St. Michael the Archangel. And it is really recognizing that that invisible kingdom, that invisible battle continues to be fought. And it is really St. Michael and all the heavenly hosts who are with God and are fighting that battle for us. And as Peter asked us to recognize our need for that prayer in humility to ask God. Now today we are celebrating the feast of St. Mark, the evangelist who wrote the second gospel um, uh, the second of the, of the four Gospels. And scholars are not 100% sure of all the facts of his life. But most of them, most believe that St. Mark was very much a disciple of Peter that went around and maybe even recorded the teachings of Peter. And it was Peter's influence that we see in the, gospel, in the second Gospel that we read, which is the earliest recorded gospel that has survived to this day. We hear in our reading um, Mark's name being mentioned at the end of Peter's um, first epistle. Mark may have also been a couple other people that we hear in the, in the Bible. May have been the son of Mary uh, whose home the apostles met, that Peter met in and all the apostles met in in the 12th chapter of Acts. What we do know about Mark is how the Spirit used
used his style of writing, much different than the other Gospels, very much focused on the actions of Jesus, what Jesus did. Whereas you, you look at the Gospels of Matthew or Luke, where we have long chapters devoted to the teachings and sayings, Mark always was devoted to the decisions that people made, how Jesus touched and made a difference in life. So as we continue our liturgy today, we're called to, in, in prayer, ask how is Jesus touching us and touching our lives? How are we casting our cares upon the Lord and recognizing God's presence always, even in this most difficult time or every difficult time? Because God is with us until the end of the time as he is seated at the right hand of God the Father. St. Mark the Evangelist, pray for us. Mark proclaimed the good news of the true Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Let us ask the Father to hear our intentions for a world in need of the hope of the gospel. Our response this morning is, let your goodness be upon us, Lord. Let your goodness be upon us, Lord. That the church may be a living sign of true concern and dedicated care for those who are rejected by our society. We pray. Let, Let your, your goodness, goodness be upon us, us, Lord. That those who wandered away from the paths of righteousness may hear the voice of Christ, the Good Shepherd, calling them home. We pray. Let, Let your, your goodness, goodness be upon us, us, Lord. That young people may hear the voice of our Lord, calling them to conversion and to a life of service. We pray. Let your goodness be upon us, Lord. That all who are suffering or sick may realize that they are loved by God through the care and attention we give them. We pray. Let your goodness be upon us, Lord. That the dead may pass through the gate of the sheepfold and rejoice with the shepherd and the guardian of their souls. We pray. Let your goodness be upon us, Lord. The intention of this Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Rugubel F. Ellis. We offer to the Lord as well these intentions submitted to us. For the intentions of Leticia Ligon, Jeffrey Abneg, Yashli Singh, Margo Rudon, George Tidalo, and all working at the grocery stores. Mark Joshua, Maria Erica Chasmin, and Joan Catherine Bernardino. Perla and Henry Solikin. We pray for the sick, for Estrella T. Opinaldo, Maria Lourdes Bernardino, Colonel Roger Luis. We pray for the deceased, for Albert Otranto, Julian Aguinaldo, Juan Maldonado, Carmen Tabaquero, who was laid to rest yesterday, and also for the intentions for uh, Jacqueline and Sean's wedding. And in a moment of silence, we offer to the Lord the intentions we carry within our hearts, those we've deposited in the Ark of Prayer chest, and the intentions of our whole parish family. We pray to the Lord. Let, 
let your goodness be upon us, Lord. Almighty God, assisted by the prayers of St. Mark, faithful herald of the gospel, we bring our intentions before you through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we venerate the glory of St. Mark, we offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of praise and humbly beseech you that your church may always persevere in the preaching of the gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Venis Uncelli et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna. Fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of 
of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Kevin our Bishop, Timothy, Thomas, and Todd, his brother bishops, all the bishops, priests, deacons, religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your Blessed Apostles, Santiago de Compostela, Saint Mark, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ.
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, says the Lord. Alleluia. And we pray now a prayer for spiritual communion for all of those joining us at home. My dear Jesus, Jesus, I, I believe, believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that what we have received from your holy altar may sanctify us and make us strong in the faith of the gospel which St. Mark proclaimed through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray now to Mary, our mother, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you, we humbly pray. And do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you and all of your loved ones, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And our closing hymn is in the day of the Lord. In the day of the Lord, the sun will shine like the dawn of eternal day. All creation will rise to dance and sing the glory of the Lord. And on that day will trust his triumph, on that day will all be free, free from want, free from fear. celebration of the Mass in honor of St. Mark. Please join us again tonight uh, for this evening for adoration of the Blessed Sacrament with the Rosary, Divine Mercy Chaplet, and Benediction. And may God bless all of you and all of your family and loved ones.